right, week 16. After a huge win in week 15 against the uh, Atlanta Falcons, an absolute stomp. Matt Ryan could not do anything against us. And now we're going up against a, a divisional team, the Rams. Yeah, the Los Angeles Rams. So, And they are 5-9. and nine. These are two big weeks coming up here. So if we win this game and the Seattle Seahawks lose their game against the Arizona Cardinals, we clinch our division and we will make playoffs. Now, if the Seahawks win and we win, it'll go down to week 17 to decide who takes the division. Nine. But we do have that tie, actually. So we will see how that all plays out this week as the uh, Seahawks, they are going to end up playing the Arizona Cardinals this week. So Seahawks, they uh, lost last week against the Panthers who have been absolutely amazing. So they're going to verse the Cardinals and then the last week, week 17, they have the 49ers to play. Now, taking a look at some stats, we are number one in passing. Jimmy Garoppolo, four passing touchdowns last week. Outstanding. But we are not here to check out our stats. We're here to check out Jerry Goff and the Rams. 18 passing touchdowns, seven interceptions, 3,000 yards. Having a pretty good year. Next, they have Cam Akers. He's got four touchdowns. Lamar Miller, also on that team as well. So it looks like they're just struggling in general with passing, rushing. They don't really have any big threat. I would say Cooper Cup's not even their top receiver. So defensively, I mean, Terrell Burgess, Burgess um, 86 tackles. Kendall Beckworth. You know, Troy Hill. How's Aaron Donald? Okay, Aaron Donald's being scary. And Samson Abukam is you know, pretty dangerous as well. I remember he got a few sacks. I don't remember if it was two against us. Interceptions, though. They've got quite a bit on this team. Jalen Ramsey's got two this season. So they got a lot working for them. How is their kick return? They don't have a touchdown yet. No, they don't have any touchdowns. And just a reminder, last time that we played the Rams did not go in our favor. We only put up nine points. That was before we found our offense. Jimmy Garoppolo still threw for 342 yards, though. And we did pick off Jared Goff. Cam Akers ran all over us. What was his longest? Say he broke a big 70 yarder on us. Receiving. Yep, we kind of took over that department. IU completely had a good game. Six receptions. Short Kittle also had 80 yards and seven receptions. And their highest re receiver in receiving yards was Everett, really, with 47. Nothing dangerous. Robert Woods had the touchdown. Defensively, I mean, Kendall Beckwith had the interception sacks wise. Aaron Donald got four. They had actually quite a few four, five, six, seven, eight sacks on us. So that is something to look forward in this game. And we've got to get the ball off quick because they are coming at us. So now we will jump right into the game Rams and Niners. Hey everybody, it's the coach, and this is Madden 20 on EA Sports. Up next, we'll see Jared Goff and the NFC champion Los Angeles Rams as they match up with Jimmy Garoppolo and the San Francisco 49ers. I'll have scores around the league for you at the half, but it's time for a little football. So we'll hand it over to our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. 
The holiday season is upon us. We've got the gift of the NFL as we're underway here in week 16. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Here we go, here we go, here we go. complete to his receiver Pettis and he'll get it up to the 33 yard line well, Pettis is quickly becoming the number one receiving option for Jimmy Garoppolo in the last year John Lynch said that they love the way he closed the season nowhere to escape and he goes down the defensive player of the year Aaron Donald and they're going to have a third down so trouble already here on their opening drive. This is third and nine. From the gun, it's Garoppolo. Taking a shot for Samuel. It's caught inside the 25. A big play there for the Niners. 51 yards. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play that picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. So barely time to catch our breath. Here's first and 10 just outside the red zone. The former Purdue Boilermaker, Raheem Moster. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Now Garoppolo on the bootleg. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Boom! That's how we do it! Here we go, here we go. The Rams calling on their nickel set here defensively for third down. Working from the gun, Garoppolo. And that is incomplete. Nice play there to force the incompletion. And to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle is going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams think they come in bunches. CD, you know there were quite a few Bears fans back in January saying, why didn't we hold on to that Robbie Gold guy? Well, it's a legitimate question. 33 of 34 for San Francisco 2018. The crazy stat of the year, he missed more extra points, too, than he did field goals, one, in the 2018 season. On first and ten, golf. And a catch made by Hopkins. The completion good for three, and it's second down. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Now a first-time Pro Bowler from a year ago, Lamar Miller. And oh, his first carry, he loses the football. And he'll wind up with about six, up past the 30 to the 31. Wow, that ball gets knocked free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. 50 catches for him now on the year. He's got a first down. A first down carry now for Miller. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards. And it's second and two. And he'll find his target. Woods, it's complete. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 47. The tally there, minus two yards. Brings up third down. From the gun on third down. Golf. That's going to be complete to his tight end, Everett. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers' 34-yard line. Goff in the offense with a first and 10. And he's 4 for 4 now, throwing the ball to start the drive. They go back to the ground now with Miller. This will be stopped about 2 yards shy of the marker. 8-yard gain, 2nd and 2. Keep playing. 
Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. Lamar Miller. And this carry not as productive. He swallowed up at the line of scrimmage. He's already put it on the ground once in this first half. There are no gain, just struggling to get going. Yeah, and what he needs right now, a dose of confidence, which means his guys have to chop a hole, the big one for him, give him a chance to run a little bit and gain some of that confidence back. He didn't get it on that carry. He needed two, he got one, and that's going to leave him with fourth down and a yard. Well, they picked up a portion of it, but not all that they needed. Now that leads to a decision on fourth and one. Let's see what they decide to do. Vinatieri, the NFL's oldest active player, also the league's all-time leading scorer, passed Morton Anderson last year. Yeah, he turned 46 in December of 2018. He really can't see it in his leg, maybe in the beard. You can see it in the beard. Maybe in the beard, that's about it. But as long as he's booting him the way he's booting him, keep going, big here go, guy. Here go, here go. The San Francisco offense ready to start their next drive. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you do, you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. There to make the tackle, Samson Abuka. Here's Moster. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. I know the scouting report on him is that he didn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked off near the 29. And they will take over at the 29-yard line. Golf will lead the Rams up here first and 10, just shy of the 30. Now Golf. He completes this into the hands of Miller. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. They only got a yard out of that last completion. And that makes this second and nine. Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. It's a loss of five there, bringing up second. And that false start penalty is certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. Goff now to throw. And he's got the hook up here. It's Woods. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. Give him eight on the play, and they're going to face a third down. From the gun, here's Goff. The Woods coming off by far the best year of his career. 86 catches, over 1,200 yards. Now he's hoping to build on that, but well, he was a key cog in the wheel that took them to the Super Bowl last season. Goff in the offense with a first and 10, and he's completed all seven of his passes thus far. Now a play fake, and it's gone. That's complete to the tight end, Everett. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. That'll be a loss of four yards on the play. And it'll bring up a second and 14. offense. So that'll back him up five. And that false start penalty is certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. Gone. And his throw here is incomplete. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Again, Goff dumps it complete to Miller. And they will advance this across midfield, but still well shy of the first as he's tackled at the 47. 3-3, a tight one after one on EA Sports. He punted four times in the loss last week as he gets this one away here. Let's go. Let's do it. 
Hard to believe, but the regular season starting to draw to a close. We've got the final Sunday night game of the year coming up later tonight. Matt Nagy and the Bears hosting his mentor, Andy Reid, and the Kansas City Chiefs. That'll be a good one from Frigid Soldier Field. And then tomorrow night, the final Monday night game of the year, Packers and Vikings from Minneapolis. And the first play of the drive there is incomplete. Pettis once again the target, and now it's second down. It's a lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain to throw. It's Garoppolo. Open. Man is Pettis. It's complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A gain of 19 and picking up the first. Garoppolo on first down. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. He'll get 17 on that one, and the Niners have a first down. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. And he slings one that's incomplete. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. They fake the give. Now Garoppolo looks to throw. Blitz coming and down he goes. The defensive player of the year, Aaron Donald. And they're going to face an uphill battle here on third and long. Well, that last sack, it puts Garoppolo and the 49ers in a tough spot. They face a third and long. Taking a shot for Samuel. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Certainly looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one, knock it away, and brings up a fourth down decision. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. You know, in our research packet this week, prepping for the game, so many articles from the local beat writer about the offensive struggles of this team and what will they do this offseason? What do you think they'll do? Well, number one, they'll turn to their self-scouting report. And every team that's any good does this. They have outside groups. Check out their team, scout them, and tell you who can play, who can't play, and reasons why. Some of it may just be health. They have to get some guys healthy and back out on the field. But overall, evaluate this squad and make the changes that you need to. A run there on first down and a pretty good one of five yards. So make it second and five. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Second and five now. Golf. He'll get this one to Cup. Complete. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Quickly from Goff to Cup. A gain of six there on first. He won the run. He won the on second down now, it's Miller, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. Throwing on third, gone. And that is incomplete. So a couple of first downs on this drive, but it's looking like another empty possession. And those empty possessions are certainly starting to pile up. So the adjustments that teams talk about all the time have to be taking place. They've got to analyze what's breaking down and figure a way to fix it. Here we go, here we go. Excellent placement. And off that bounce, Charles, I didn't know where it was going to go. It can be an inexact science as to where they place it, but they say the two-yard line. Yeah, I don't know how they really determined that. And let's face it, at the end of that play, one side's going to be happy, the other team's going to be unhappy. So what do they do, shorten the hypotenuse? I mean, how do they figure that out? You know that stuff. You're the smart guy. Oh, no, that's you, partner. Now it's the Florida Atlantic alum. This is Alfred Morris. And from the four, they get it to the eight on a pickup of four. Four yards on the pickup there as it'll leave them with a third and about four more for first. Throwing now is Garoppolo. That's caught. It's Coleman. Now Mo 
Oster. Micah Kaiser was in on the tackle. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. On play action, it's Garoppolo. He's got his tight end on the corner route. It's complete. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 15 for the Niners there and a first down. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. This is Moster, and he's going to be stopped up quickly here. Just a yard up to the 39. On second and nine, Garoppolo completes it to Coleman. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. It'll go as a first down for San Francisco on a pickup of 16. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Second quarter, two minutes to go. Tie ball game. A reminder, once we hit halftime, as we do all season, we'll send it down to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have all the stats and scores from games in progress around the NFL. The best multitasker in the business, the coach. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Play number nine set to come here on the drive on third and two. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. That one good for seven as this long drive continues and the chains move again. Now Garoppolo. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Debo Samuel, the rookie wideout, his intended receiver. But it'll be second down. Ball on the 30 as they come up, second and 10. Garoppolo looks to throw once more. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. Garoppolo looks to throw. Wide open receiver complete. The 49ers now going to use the first of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. This will be caught just inside the 10. Now San Francisco going to call their second timeout as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. This will be caught at about the 6. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the 5 at the 6. Garoppolo going to try and throw on third. Under pressure, down he goes. Sacked at the 10. The Rams going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go in this first half. And the 14-year trusty veteran able to knock it through. And they will take the lead here in this battle of field goals at 6-3. Well, the drive ends in just three, but they'll take it. Looks like they'll head to the locker room, barring something unfortunate in front on the scoreboard. Yeah, they may not be jumping up and down and celebrating because they have the lead, but still, any little momentum in a game like this is important to a team. And they'll feel real good about going in and regrouping, knowing that they are out in front. And they'll indeed start on the ground to run that clock. And they'll wind up getting this to the 37. Gain of nine. Now the Rams will signal for a timeout their second as they'll stop it with 13 seconds to play in half number one. They'll find Everett there, complete. Now a signal and a timeout call as it comes with nine seconds to go in this first half of play. On first and ten, gone. And that'll be incomplete with just six seconds left on the clock. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. A final shot before break here. Golf. In a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off by a Keller Witherspoon. And okay, so much for our halftime break. Apparently, we're going to get right back to it. It's the 49ers out in front, and they will get the football first as well as we are back and started in the second half. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. 
Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. And with the way this offense has played thus far, to be frank, they got to feel pretty grateful to be in the ball game. I would agree with you totally because they've done all of nothing offensively in this game, yet they still find themselves in a position on this drive where a touchdown can give them the lead. They need to take advantage of it. And they're still looking for that first touchdown here in the third quarter. All they have so far, the field goal. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. A shotgun snap for gone. They got a man. It's Woods. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. Well, they only needed a small gain on third down. They end up getting over 30 yards. Tenth carry now for Lamar Miller. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. From the 31, Goff. Under pressure, and he will go down. Sack back at the 38. D Ford has now recorded 10 sacks on the season. So Goff, he'll try to refocus after the sack. The Rams now set up with a tough one, a third and long. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. Down here in the third quarter, obviously that's one they could have used. Yeah, one of my favorite special teams coaches in the NFL told me what separates the kickers in the NFL versus the ones who are not is not the misses. It's the second miss in a row. Best kickers in the league, they don't miss two in a row. He's got to get his head back together in case he gets another shot. Well, the first play of the drive lost four. Now they'll look to move it forward here on second and 14. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. Garoppolo looking to throw on third and two. This is Coleman with the ground. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. Now Garoppolo on the bootleg. That's complete. It's Kyle Juszczyk. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. A good pick up there, 21 yards. Now a handoff here to his running back. This will be a five-yard pickup as they move it from the 20 to the 15. Second and five now. Garoppolo. This one into the hands of Kittle, the tight end. There's Garoppolo to throw. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. That's a good job there, creating the contact to force the incompletion. And now, since it's fourth down, that should set up a field goal situation. And a nice sigh of relief defensively to be able to hold them to three. So three field goals that he's hit. Now this last one helps him stretch out the lead. He's been solid, hasn't he? And he lives up to the adage that every offensive coach has ever said to us. We want to end every possession with a kick, right? For them, it's either extra point, field goal, or at worst, a punt. In this case, it's been threes. Golf will lead the Rams up here first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Golf now looking to throw. That's complete to the tight end, Everett. First down, Los Angeles there with a pickup of 14 yards. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. They'll run with Miller. Now the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Again, it's Miller. 
And he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. From the 50, it's gone. That's taken in, complete to Reynolds. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. And Woods has it complete. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that'll bring up a third down. From the gun on third down, gone. Throw right side is into the hands of his tight end, Everett. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. Partner, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. The 49er offense set to get this drive underway. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and 10. Here's a throw, complete right side to start things out. And he is out of bounds, able to get it across the 20-yard line. A gain of 10 and a 49er first down. From the gun, it's Garoppolo. Completes it to the tight end, Kittle. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Facing a second and two after that last catch. Good for eight yards. Garoppolo now. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one. And it's third down. After the incompletion here now, third and two. And yet again, it's Garoppolo. He's going to fire one deep over the middle. And that'll be incomplete. Well, they took their shot all right, but it comes up empty, and it's fourth down. We've seen good cover skills on display throughout this game, really from both teams, and there's another nice example there of them making it difficult to complete a pass. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what is working, and call more of that. He's obviously a bit of a shorter running back. Sometimes when he goes up the middle like that, he, he gets lost in there, and then he pops out for 10, 20 yards. I actually asked NFL linebackers if that was true. Do you actually lose sight of some of the smaller running backs? And all of them confirmed that that can be a problem. Think of it this way. Two of the top running backs in NFL history, Emmitt Smith, Barry Sanders, both 5'10". Seven yards there and a first down. Back now here in Santa Clara. It's the Rams trailing, but they do have the football as we start the fourth and final quarter. Back to throw, gone. It's complete, it's Miller. They'll give him a yard on the play, and that'll make this a second down. Jared Goff, four times last year, he led the Rams on a fourth quarter comeback. He obviously didn't do it in Super Bowl 53, but can he do it here? Goff throwing complete to Cup, and a gain of four gets him right to the midfield strike. The Rams on third down, not quite 50%, four for nine. This is third and four. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. Dumps it complete to Miller. And he's going to be taken down here, still a couple yards short of the first. One score down, here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. And they'll run for it with Miller. And he is not going anywhere. They stop him for no gain. Sean McVay's gamble does not pay off. And the 49ers are going to get the football back. And defensively, they were ready for that. A full-on blitz on fourth down. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Samson Abukum in there to get him. And on the season now, that is nine sacks for him. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. And to give this time to the tailback. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. 
They'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and they're going to be staring at a third and long here. Garoppolo. Over the middle to Kittle, complete. They do get 18, but even that won't be quite enough. It's fourth down. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. And this offense last time turned it over when Ford on Ford didn't get it. They're lucky, though, because no points against the team on the board, but we'll see how they respond. Yeah, they've got to get a lot of credit to their defensive teammates, don't they? They had their backs on that last series, and because they did so, that allows the coach to still stay aggressive on offense and maybe go for it again in a similar situation. I was say, maybe makes that offense feel good, but when you know you've got a defense making stands like that. Yeah, that'll loosen up things a little bit, won't it? Maybe you'll play a little bit better the next time you have the ball. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Back to the air, golf on second down. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long. And they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. And after a sluggish start, he's really bounced back. The numbers bear that out. And you're a baseball guy, partner. How many at bats over the course of a baseball season? Oh, boy. Four about in a three, game. Yeah, about the four in a four game. Four times 162. 350 or so, right? Sometimes it takes a while for a guy to get going. That's my point. It's not the first few carries. You don't worry about that. As they go along, get that guy lathered up, get those blocking assignments down. Those two-yard gains turn into bigger gains as the game moves along. And he'll get only a couple up to the 22. Here we go, here we go. Wait, <laughs> Throwing his Garoppolo on third down. It's caught by Coleman. And he'll get this to the 23, but that'll be well short of what he needed. I hate to surrender the football when you're nursing a slim lead, but they're going to have to punt it away. Trust that defense. It's the right play at this stage of the game as well. You don't need to press it here because you do have that little bit of a cushion, and you count on your D to make it stand up. Well, that'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt, and the Rams will go on offense here for the first and 10. Golf will lead the Rams up here first and 10 at their own 23. Golf now looks to throw. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Once again, they'll go from the 23-yard line on second and 10. To throw is gone. Setting up the screen for Miller. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Here's gone. And his throw is going to be incomplete. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Goff throwing again. He completes this into the hands of Miller. Four yards on the pickup, and that's going to lead to a third down. Now they'll try to convert on third and six after the four-yard completion. Now Goff, and that will be incomplete. How about the defensive effort from both of these teams that we've seen in this game? Would you say it's like a high-stakes chess match right now? Uh, chess is one way to go. Uh -huh. Yeah, I like it. Okay, the only reason I say that, you feel like they're contemplating their moves before actually making one, and none of them being done very confidently. Truth be told, I've never played chess, and I know that I'm not smart enough to play chess. Guys like you with your IQ, you can pull that off. 
A little bit of daylight on that first down run. Sets him up nicely. Eight yards on the carry. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. Brandon, you know how many times we've done games, and at the start of the fourth quarter, we see both teams hold up the four fingers, fourth quarter is ours. Well, how about this drive? You saw the four fingers for four-minute offense. And this offensive line has really hunkered down and established themselves. Now, this is where they say, put the game on our shoulders, we'll lead the way, right? No doubt about it. And let me tell you, if you're a running back, all you want to do is get behind those big fellas, have a little vision, and find some space. And a solid way to do that by the first play of the drive there. Four yards down the pickup. Second and six. At the 40 and he'll give it here to his running back. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. No gain on the play as we have reached the two-minute warning. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's 49er football here as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Now a handoff here to his running back. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. Here comes the 49ers punter now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. They'll start out on the ground. It's Lamar Miller. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. The clock still runs. We're at 90 seconds now. They'll look to throw. They'll find Miller. That's complete. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. First down now, but the clock continues to move. He's back to throw. That's into the hands of Reynolds. And now look at this, big gain, but a fumble. But this will fortunately wind up out of bounds. I don't know about you, but I can hear and feel the So the challenge comes in inside of two minutes, and it gets overturned. And it changes the whole format of what's about to happen because both sides had thought a certain call had been made. Now they have to flip back and start over. From the red zone now, Goff. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. The intended receiver, Josh Reynolds. And that'll bring up second down. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. Gerald Everett is tied in, the intended receiver, and it's third down. He'll look to throw. That's going to be complete to his tight end, Everett. Now the Rams will signal for a timeout, their second, as they stop it with 28 seconds to go in this football game. Back to throw, and he is in as they have tied it late here in the final minute of the fourth quarter. They got the dramatic score to tie the game here late fourth quarter. Now all eyes resting on the foot of one man. Yeah, no doubt about it. I, you know, your brother called me before the game. That's his guy in fantasy. He needs this one badly. Finitary able to tack on the PAT. And that is going to put him on top by a point, and it sets us up for quite a finish. Then he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. Elsewhere, they're into the fourth at FedEx Field. And the Giants, they wind up winning that one. If they indeed win, it would be win number nine on the season. That's going to be caught by Samuel. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. The 49ers now going to use the first of their timeouts, as it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the ballgame. Back to throw. Completes it to the tight end, Kittle. Now a final chance to stop it here as a timeout comes in with 10 seconds left in the game. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. To throw is Garoppolo. Completes it to Coleman. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. And now with four seconds left, we get a timeout call. 
One final try now for Garoppolo. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And it's incomplete. So their final drive comes up empty. And with that, the ball game is over. Well, Charles, a pretty exhilarating finish to the end of this ball game. At the end, the Hail Mary prayers, though, they went unanswered. Could have won it, but couldn't get it done. Almost fell schoolyard or playground, didn't it? Yeah, you remember when you called that play? Everybody just go long <laughs> and try and find someone open. They gave it a shot, but unable to successfully complete it. So for the Rams, a win will come too late to save a losing season, but they do move to 6-9 and nine on the year. And they will head back home next week. Meanwhile, for San Francisco, it's loss number five for them on the year. And they'll be on the road next week as they get a date with the Seahawks in Seattle. And for Charles Davis and our entire crew, I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. All right, suffering a big loss to the Los Angeles Rams. 10 to 9, they've held us twice and beaten us twice where we can only score 9 points. But some good news, Seattle lost their game to the Arizona Cardinals, which puts us automatically into the playoffs because of our one tie against Arizona. So thank you, Arizona, for that, uh, I guess, the double. They gave us the tie, they gave us the two points, and uh, they beat the uh, Seattle Seahawks. So now it's up to Seattle to see if they can make playoffs now. As the only two teams in the NFC that made it so far, the Eagles, who clinched our conference, and us, we are the other only team in the NFC to make playoffs. In the AFC, on the other hand, Chiefs, Browns, Colts, Bills, all made playoffs so far. They've clinched their division. Chiefs looking to try and clinch the conference. And uh, let's see who they are matched up against this week. So we got Steelers and Ravens, a great divisional round. I know the Ravens are right there to make playoffs. Go find the Eagles and Giants, Panthers. So Browns are going up against the Bengals. Which is, I know the Browns are the second place team in the AFC there. Where are the others? The Colts are going up against the Jaguars. They should win that one. Chiefs and Chargers. And how are the Chargers doing this year? They're really good. Nine and six. So that's actually going to be a tough one for them. And if the Browns win against Pittsburgh, which they are six and nine this year, they will actually take first place if if the Chiefs manage to lose. So that's that's actually quite big going on for the AFC. And now the NFC, the Panthers and Saints still battling it out for their division, but both teams should make playoffs. Niners, we've already clinched it. Cowboys, Giants, Bucks. It's gonna be a close one, but I think the only teams who really have a chance now are the Giants, Cowboys. So I, those are the only two teams as we just clinch it with a loss. It's not the way I wanted to do it, but Next week, or this week, I should say, we're going to be facing off against our division rivals, the Seattle Seahawks. We beat them once. Can we beat them again?